Hey, welcome to a new video, and today we're going to be covering the S-Curve, and honestly, the S-Curve is game-changing. Putting the S-Curve on your joystick has given me a lot more control and enjoyability of my spacecraft in uh, Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous, so if you're looking to throw an S-Curve on a Verpal, this is the video for you. If you don't know what an S-Curve is, that's something that ma basically makes it so that, like, if you press down a key on your keyboard, it's either on or it's off, right? You either have 100% acceleration or you have 0%. With an S-Curve, it's something, it's more of an analog so that you can just gradually turn it on, so like... Like if I only move my joystick a little bit, I'm only getting a little bit of power. I'm not getting 100% power. So that's where the S-curve comes in to where when you push your joystick over, you're not getting 100% power and it makes it even more gradual and gives you even more control. It's something that's helped out a lot when I'm playing the game. I remember trying to use thrust at one point and just ramming into stuff because I was at 100% thrust when I only wanted to be at a little bit of thrust to control my ship. It helps out with a lot of controllability. Well, anyway, first things first, you're going to want to download the Verpal software. I'll leave a link in the description so you can get to the website and download it. It if you haven't done that yet. And once you're in the Verpal software, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to make sure your hardware is correct. My hardware is correct. I have the Verpal Warbird base, base. and uh, as you can see, you make different selections there, and I have the Constellation Alpha, and it's left-handed. That is all correct. If you are playing a game that doesn't support controllers with more than 32 buttons, you have to click this so that you're, it will read it as two different controllers, and you can still play on those games. But I do not... I'm not playing one of those games currently, so I'm just going to go ahead and click to create profile because all my information is correct. That's your next step that you want to do. It's going to go ahead and disconnect your Verpal and reconnect it to the system. And this is a left-handed controller, not because I'm left-handed, but because I fly dual stick. So this is going to be for my thrust left, right, up and down. So that's kind of what we're going to be setting it up for today. I will go over a curve I like to use if I'm using pitch and roll, which is what I use on my right hand, so you can copy that if you're using a right-handed one. But anyway, if you come over here to this axis, it really doesn't have a lot of stuff you can do. It, you can really only calibrate, which you do want to do. We're not going to do this in this video, but you definitely want to calibrate your controller, otherwise it gets a little wonky. I forgot to do that once, and when I jumped into Star Citizen, my ship flew sideways immediately and I crashed. But anyway, can't really do much and that's because we're on the light version so if you come over to the top right you see we're on light we got to click pro right so once you get to the pro there's a lot more information maybe a, little, a lot more confusing but today we're just going to be focusing on getting s curve so you want to be make sure you're in the access tab come over to access curves and as you can see you can kind of set up curves here and i'll go over how to get an s curve real quick you can either grab these things and move it around with your mouse or you can type in numbers like zero to 200 here to get anything in between but for an s curve we're going to want to set this to a symmetric curve there we go symmetric curve and as you can see we got a lot more dots and we can set set it up a little bit easier this is the way I know how to get an S-curve, and you do not want to start in the beginning. The first time I did this, I started in the beginning with my S-curve, and it definitely ended up not being an S-curve in the game. So you want to start in the center. You see this uh, beginning, center, end, right? You want to start in the center for this, and this is how you get an S-curve. This one, I'm going to set this up for the roll and pitch. This is kind of what I like to start base off of. And depending on what ship you fly the most, you might want to change this, but I start off at 8, and I go 12, 20, then 30, then 40, then 50, then 65, then 80, and then jump up to 100 from there. And that's the curve I like to use for pitch and roll. Like I said before, we're going to set this up for thrust up, down, left, right. So I like to have a little bit different of uh, S-curve for that. And I like to start off at 20, a little bit more aggressive. I find that works out better for me. And then jump up by 10 all the way up to 100. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90 100 ends up with something like this and now i know these neither one of these looks like an s curve i don't know why verbal chose to do this but they chose to make it look more like a valley curve or just be a valley curve in this software their old software would have shown this as an s curve so it's a little bit confusing but this is how your curve should look if you want an s curve in the game and now for the next thing where you're actually putting these curves on the axes so you go back to setup here and as you can see you have all these axes here the x-axis is your left right axis on your joystick this is your up down axis on your joystick stick and this is the little thumb joystick at the top of your jo joystick both these are I'll throw a picture and point at the point at it in the picture so that you guys can see what I'm talking about the slider is the pinky trigger again I'll show that on the picture and this is your twist axis so the axis that we're going to be setting up today is the x and the y this is your left right and this is your up down so for this for my left right thrust i want my to be curve two remember i said we're setting this up for thrust and we're setting and that was our curve two then i'd click save next we are now our y axis this is the up down axis and you can set that i'm setting that as curve two so i'm setting it the same that's how i like to set it up then i'm going to click save so now we have both of these set up right so 
both these are set up correct. Now, one thing I like to do, and this is just a little bonus tip here, after I set my S curves on here, I don't like to second guess if my is working and get in game and start flying around and realize it's not working. So one thing I do to make sure that my profile is working is I come in here to the LED and I just change my LED. I just change it to green. Now, I usually don't really care that much about LED colors, but in this case, I'm using it to tell that, make sure that my current the profile I want is work. And then after we're all done with this, if you want this to work on your device, you click save VPC to device because you'll notice your LED hasn't changed on your joystick yet. Once you click this, it's going to do the little download, disconnect, reconnect thing. Yep, disconnected. And once it reconnects, your LED should change on your device. Yep, my LED is now changed on my device. I know that this profile is working. And when I go click on my accesses on this profile, I have the correct curve on my profile access. So if I see that color in my joystick, I can confidently go into game and know I have the correct profile. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something from this uh, video and I hope the S-curve helps you out in game.